The first thing we'd like to talk about today is why do we braze things, weld things, or solder things? So the first thing is a very well-known practice of joining two metals together is to weld them. This is where you have two similar metals, in this case stainless steel, and you are fusing them by raising them to the melting point of the met parent material and use a filler rod to join them together. Very well known practice in particularly steels and, and stainlesses. That is great when you've got two, two metals the same. If you want to fuse something together that's dissimilar metals, so for example you want to put some stainless with some copper or some brass, then at that stage you, uh, you would need to use a brazing or soldering method. Soldering is used a lot in the plumbing world, in domestic environments, and is effectively where you have two materials, and I'm going to use, in this case, uh, a piece of copper pipe with a joint that you could use in a domestic environment or an industrial environment. And we use a filler metal which melts at a lower temperature than the parent metal. Soldering is when you use something a bit like this, which is a soft solder, melts at below 400 degrees, and that's used a lot in domestic plumbing applications. The other way of doing it is by using uh, brazing alloys, which is what we're looking and specialising on today. We've got two variations of brazing alloy. One is um, a Fosbraze 5, which is a copper phosphorus self-fluxing brazing rod and is used for joining copper to copper. That is used extensively in the heating, ventilating, air conditioning world, and we'll show you a demonstration on how to do that in a later video. The other way of doing it is if we want to join two dissimilars, but they are therefore a brass to a copper, for example, a brass to a stainless, sorry, uh, at that stage you can't use your copper foss, so you use what we call the silver brazing alloy and our Silbraze 55T is the one that we're going to use in the application today. That requires the use of a flux which you can buy in two size pots, the small pot for, for little usage and the bigger pots for um, bigger application. At this stage what we're going to do is the whole principle is depends upon the joints being clean and this goes for dissimilar metals or similar metals. So the first thing we're going to do is actually talk through preparing the joint and making it clean and ready to braise. There's no point in doing anything, it's like all good DIY, painting at home, the majority of the success is based on the preparation of the goods. So the first thing we're going to look at is cleaning the, the joints and different bits of equipment we use for doing that. So if we're looking to join two copper pieces together with a, uh, a solder uh, a solder free joint, you can get these joints which have soft solder in them, um, but that's not a good application for an industrial um, heating, ventilating, air conditioning application. Although these are new bits of copper, they look clean and tidy, they aren't good enough for us to actually do the, the, the brazing operation. So what we use is a, a, a cleaning uh, tool and we just spin that round like that, which cleans up the end. And you can see there it's a nice oxide free surface, nice and clean. So we do the other end there and the same, two or three turns like that and we get a nice clean inside. Good practice, just give it a quick whistle on the inside because although we're not looking to braise the inside, it just helps get rid of any contamination or anything that's in there from when you've cut the pipe. For the jointing piece, again, we just run that round to remove any oxide films that have built up over a period of time with it being in the package. Like that. You can also use um, a webbing uh, tape which has got an abrasive to it which doesn't clog up uh, and that again can be used 
like that and does the same thing. So having done that with a copper to copper using a Fosbraze 5 brazing alloy, um, we're going to do this without any flux. Flux is a chemical deoxidant uh, that helps keep the, the surface clean when you're heating it up. But we're lucky in the, the, with a Fosbraze, you don't need to use the flux. It can just, it's got a, the phosphorus in the alloy actually acts as a fluxing or a cleaning uh, agent. So we're gonna pop that into there and then look at heating it up. For the demonstration on this, um, we're actually gonna use a fairly simple, what I'd call a DIY type of grade of, uh, of torch, just to show you how to do it. These are eminently available in a lot of stores and are very good for a, a sort of DIY or a, a small user application. Um, the problem with them is they don't provide enough heat to commercially do something um, quickly and efficiently, but they do get the job done. So what I'm gonna do today is demonstrate here using just a, an eminently cheap, available from most DIY stores, um, propane based uh, torch. We're using the FOSS Braze 5. The art of all brazing is patience and to wait for the joint to be uh, warm enough before you even start looking at applying the solder. The other thing is to make sure you're heating the right part. The solder, the brazing alloy, the FOSS Braze in this case will run to the hottest point. So if we heat up here, the, 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 the brazing alloy will try to run uphill. If we run heat down here, it won't work. So we need to be heating. We want the, the, the brazing joint to be penetrating in down into the joint here. So the majority of the heating will be done on this middle section on the jointing part with a little bit of the heating up here. So let's give it a go. Moving the heat and the flame all the way around to try and get an even heat as best we can. You can see as it's warming up, as I move the flame away, we're actually getting an oxidant oxide generating. And the black is the copper oxide that's forming when the air is being allowed in. When the flame's there, it actually is preventing the oxygen getting to the surface. But if we move it away, you can see it goes black fairly quickly. So we're looking here at trying to get it warmed up all the way through, top to bottom. And patience with these torches, it's just starting to go cherry red. You can just see it's starting to go cherry red. As I move the flame away, you can see it better. So what I'm gonna do is get it up to about that heat and apply a bit of rod around the back and it pulls it round the front. Remove the heat and then let it cool naturally. If you quench cool that too quickly, you could risk breaking the, the braze joint. Once it's cooled down, we'll, uh, we'll quench it and, and show you the braze joint. Obviously, in practical reasons, if you're doing a joint in an air conditioning unit or something like that, the pipe work won't be as conveniently held in a clamp, um, but the, the art and the experience is knowing where and how to do it. But the, the, the reality is what we're trying to do is apply the heat here and the brazing alloy here, and the brazing alloy will flow round to the hottest point.